it is to try and tackle hunger and poverty in the world. Yesterday we looked at our environment and what we can do, and we heard from some wonderful speakers. And of course, all of these themes are intertwined, aren't they? The environment and poverty and conflict and good news and bad news, they all, we hold them together. So this morning we're going to hear from three speakers, and I'm going to, in a minute, invite our first speaker to come and speak to us. This is Douglas Mallet. He's from the United States. Now Douglas, I really like this man. He's a systems engineer with the Space Shuttle program. And um, he's also um, here representing something called the Venus Project, which I'm very interested to find out more about. Now, this project aims to advance, um, let me get this one, right, the social advancement of humanity through science, engineering, and technology. Um, and Douglas uh, is also a space advocacy um, speaker and author. And he's just written a book, is that right? He's just written a wonderful book, it sounds really fascinating, called Turning Point, How Space Exploration and Development Will Determine the Rise and Fall of Humanity. Sorry? Rise or Fall. The Rise or Fall. Yes, thank you very much. That's <laughs> what's so wonderful about being in the community is that you get a lot of support. <laughs>
That's basically what it is. And most people would fight that for computers and things of that nature. But to be honest, isn't the hammer an innovation of science and technology? Instead of using a rock, you use a hammer. You invent something that's more efficient, more sustainable, better for the time. Sustainability, of course, is the key focus of well, the conference this is right now. There's another word that goes with sustainability that should be considered, and that is abundance. If you do not have abundance, you have deficiencies. You have holes in your systems. When you have a hole in the system or a deficiency, inevitably you get a hole or a deficiency in humanity. We've seen throughout history how those holes manifest, usually through conflict, subjugation, stratification, those who have, those who have not. But through abundance, you achieve sustainability. For the first time in human history, we are capable of producing abundance of all biological needs and quality of life needs through the advent of technology without the need for human labor. I want you to think about that for a moment. The ability to provide everything you need to live and live well without the need for human labor. Computers, robots, automation, advanced technical systems that can process trillions of bits of information. The entire, I know you all are very smart, the entire room combined could not accomplish what a single computer can do as far as information processing is concerned. We have invented these tools to use them for our own benefit, but we're not really doing that. So what I'm going to talk about later on this afternoon is I'm going to go through a systematic breakdown of all of the biological, all of the social, all of the quality of life needs that typical human and humans need in order to show you all of the technical capabilities that can produce those in abundance. It's very important to understand that no time in human history has this ever been possible. Any ideas that you may have of the future, how people behave, all of those historical contexts are valid prior to our current capability. Never before have we been able to do what I'm going to discuss this afternoon. And I look forward to enjoying that conversation with you. Thank you. I think you'll find many people in your workshop this afternoon, Doug. Hello everyone, thank you for coming to, uh, to my workshop here. Uh, I'll briefly introduce myself again, although the PowerPoint kind of covers it. Uh, I'm a space shuttle systems engineer. I work with the payload manifest for space shuttle Endeavor. Uh, that's my bird, basically. Um, we're scheduled to launch in February. It'll be the last flight of Endeavor because the US space shuttle program is, is winding down. Um, so that's, uh, that's what I do. I'm also an author of a book called Turning Point, How Space Exploration and Development Will Determine the Rise or Fall of Humanity. In case anyone's interested, I brought some with me. They're in the back, and uh, it's 20 bucks American, so I, I don't really care what the conversion rate is. I just take 20 or 15, I don't, I don't care about that. But if anybody wants to read about space exploration and development and understand the take on what it, what it has meant to humanity up to this point, what it means to us in the future, the technologies that it has developed, and a lot of those technologies I'm gonna end up talking about here. And because that's where you get the sustainability and the abundance, is from the technological applications that we've invented over the course of at least the last 30 or 40 years. We've really made abundance possible. Any time before that, it hasn't been possible. And I just realized I'm not using the microphone. <laughs> any time before that, it hasn't been possible. So, let's start off. Basic necessities of life. 
biological. Who here can just shout out or raise a hand or whatever? Give me a typical biological need. Water. Water. Oxygen. Air, oxygen, mm -hmm. yes. Food. Okay, food. Sleep. Sleep. Mm, not necessarily. I'll explain why in a bit. Biological need. And now, if you're talking about energy as in biological, that's what the food provides, the food and the water, correct? So that's how you can look at it that way. Yeah, it helps with the melatonin and the skin and everything of that nature as well. It also helps with mental perception and attitude, and sunlight, exposure. All right, so we got air, food, water, sleep, medical care. Be able to take care of yourself if you get broken. I consider that a biological necessity in order to maintain your life. So there's there's basically the strong five examples of biological necessities. So now what about quality of life necessities? Things that take you above and beyond just living. The biological needs keep the human being, the, the creature, alive. What about quality of life? Who can name off some of those? Clothes. Shelter. Shelter. Clothes, okay. What else? Transportation. Transportation. Education. 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 Internet. I can, yes. I can go to your energy. Now is where the energy comes into play. We were talking about the electricity, the power, the, what drives, the comforts that we have, the AC, the heating, things of that nature. So we've got shelter was covered, clothing, education, energy, transportation, communication. Pretty big, especially in today's world. We've learned that it's because of global communication that we have become a more interconnected and knowledgeable world. No longer are events isolated to small regions and you find out about it 10 months later via telegraph or something like that. It is now Call up your phone and you know what's going on in the world in an instant. Or just hop online. So what about necessities for a sound mind and social state? What kind of things do you think would apply in this category? Security. Okay. Yeah. Social freedom. Hmm? Social freedom. Social freedom. Music. Motivation. Motivation. Okay. Alright. Purpose. What do you want to be when you grow up? What do you really want to do? Not what you have to do to pay the bills, you know, because what you really want to do might not pay enough. That happens a lot in the arts. People just can't afford to do what they want to do for a living because it's not going to give them a high quality of life. So they settle for something else and they do their art as a hobby. But what would motivate them the most is their passion, is their, is their art. For me, I'm a science technical geek. So that's, that's my thing, that's what motivates me. I love space exploration, I love starships, I love satellites, I love studying Mars geography and thinking about lunar bases. And so that's what motivates me. Recreation, community, family, friends, colleagues. And with recreation, I guess I could put the arts and things of that nature, but that would also go into the purpose. So they can blend together. These kinds of things, this slide, a lot of these can inter interconnect. So now we're going to talk about abundance. And we're going to get back to that list here in a second. But we're going to detail that a little bit more. By far, the most important word with respect to mankind's ability to live peacefully on this earth is the word abundance. Abundance has been possible in small pockets. An island nation, if it has enough natural resources in a small population, can live in relative abundance to its condition. But I'm not talking about isolated pockets. We're talking about the world here at this conference. So can we provide abundance of those needs 